Hello, I'm Ben Wright, and my level is a remake of Crowded Downtown from Super Street Fighter 4. Uh, for this approach, I looked at a zombie apocalypse style, um, and I went for a realistic art style. Here's my final scene. In terms of the workflow I used, it's very similar in areas to Tor Frick, Tiago Klafk, Horrences, Chris Alaboon, and Blake Fox. Tiago Klafk uses texture atlases to texture his pieces. He uses one for the main textures and one for all of his trims and details. I tried to do something similar with mine where one was used for all of the main buildings and structures and the other for all the details on those buildings. Tor Frick uh, uses, has a workflow for vertex painting and I, I followed his tutorials and used that to gain an understanding of the best methods to go about doing that and building my shader up and understanding how it works. Horrences I used to gain an understanding of advanced decal use. Um, because I use a lot of decals in my level I wanted to make sure I knew exactly how they worked and what sort of types there are and I think I applied that quite well. Chris Alberloon's workflow and shader for World Grunge Offset was very helpful um, and it helped to apply grunge to the entire scene to break up instancing. Blake Fox's glass shader workflow was also used uh, for the glass in the scene and it helped me to understand caustics and refraction and where they're suitable and in what situations they're suitable. There weren't many problems with the workflow the workflows I used other than it being quite time consuming overall. Because of the mistakes of last semester, it meant that every element in the scene had to be altered in some way, if not completely remade. And this obviously ate into my production time before I could start adding new features and elements into the scene. Using atlases also seems to limit creativity straight off the bat, in that you have to start with a very basic scene, basic te with basic textures and then use all of the tools within UDK such as vertex painting and decals and lighting tricks and normal maps to boost those textures and get the most that you can out of them but by doing this you're still saving the memory and keeping that high performance rate so it's worth doing it. It also means that if you want to make any changes to materials it's a lot faster to do that because it'll update to everything. In terms of things implemented, uh, cloth, th cloth physics was one of these things. Uh, I used this on the canopies and on the small little overhanging canopies on some of the windows. Uh, this gives more of a realistic feel to the scene and it means that not only do I not have to try and guess and work out what looks realistic but it will sort that out for me. Um, and it also means I have access to a few little variables that can change how that cloth reacts. Uh, as mentioned, decals are, were a big part of the scene, and while a lot were used, they were only used where needed to replicate original scene details that I had to take out to use this workflow. Uh, this helped with the level's overall performance, though, as there weren't as many meshes and not nearly in, as many textures. Fog was implemented um, and recommended by Electra to try and get the same sort of composition that's used in the reference images. There weren't as many sharp edges and fog seemed to clear this up quite nicely or even though it was very subtle. Matinee was also used to animate the spinning fan on the shop front and material nodes were used to animate the sky dome. While these are obviously very simple ways of animating, it adds a bit of realism to the scene and it breaks up how static the the scene felt even though it is abandoned it's nice to have a bit of secondary animation in there and also quite a few shaders were used um, to help with specific effects and optimization firstly vertex painting uh, was used using a series of lerps um, and they were tying in different channels of the vertex color node and that allowed up to four different materials. The materials I chose were red peeling paint, brick, moss for the roofs and just general grime. 
I then developed a colour swapping shader which used an alpha mask and it allowed the metal section of the texture atlas to be reused and recoloured for all of the different metal pieces like the buckets and barrels in the scene. Uh, the world offset grunge was implemented using a fairly simple shader that uses the world position node um, and it basically textures it based on where it is in the world as opposed to you know the local coordinates of it. Finally a glass shader was developed and this used refraction and specular masks and it gave realistic distortion and how light affects glass which looked pretty nice in the end. There were quite a few uh, issues that had to be overcome. Um, one of these being that when you're using so many decals that decals that are so close together, a lot of these would either bleed through things or be distorted or not overlay properly. But I found some cool little tool tools in the properties such as depth bias and sort ordering and decal filters that affects what the decals affect and how and in what order they are and that was pretty useful and it fixed a lot of problems. Uh, there were some lighting errors as well uh, because I used just a standard lighting fix it sort of hid all of the lighting errors and then when it came to making the actual lighting for the level suddenly there were loads of errors everywhere I realized I didn't have that many light maps, especially on the important parts of the scene. So I added a few in, uh, added some to the buildings and to the floor, and suddenly I realized that I didn't have any shadowing before either, so that made the scene look a lot better. And then for the food cart hero piece, I wanted to have both translucent and transparent blend modes on one material. Um, I was trying to find a way to blend those together, but I couldn't get that to work, so... In Max, I made it. I made two materials set up onto one mesh, and then I could use two materials in UDK to fix that. I spoke to a few lecturers about my work, and I got a few industry professionals uh, to have a look at it, such as Tor Frick and Rob Bowen. Uh, the feedback that was given to me was pretty based on aesthetics, obviously. At this point, all of the shaders were working, and the technical side was working, so it was just about the appearance. Uh, there was a lot of recommendation for deeper normals and higher speculars. I think this is largely down to the lighting solution that was used. It seemed really hard to show off that, that depth and specularity um, because the light was almost blowing out the scene. Um, whereas they look really nice in the material editor and stuff. So that was a bit of a setback. I never really fixed that as much as I would like. Um, if we have a look at some industry stuff of outdoor environments that you know have nice outdoor lighting such as this one from Rise especially and I have a few others here as well we can see how how different it is and although it does seem to blow out certain areas because the lighting isn't taking over the entire scene a lot of the shadowing and the soft light actually adds for a nice comparison Whereas in mine it's pretty much all blown out apart from the alleyway, so that's a bit of a shame. Um, and in comparison with some of the peers, we can see that I tried to find people that used outdoor lighting as well and went for a daytime scene, but I couldn't find many. Um, we can see on some of these that they're not as bright, mine's a lot brighter. Um, but I guess because mine is much brighter in my reference images, I'm only following what I'm trying to get to look the same but it seems like not many people have light mapped their floors meaning they don't have shadows like I didn't originally but seeing how well that affects the scene um, it's nice to know that I took the effort to put that in and I don't know it seems like no one has really capitalized on the power of lighting like they do in the industry this scene however in particular I thought really did well on all of the fundamentals of a good environment. The lighting's suitable and nothing's too bright or bloomed out and it's not too dark either. And the textures are quite clean and simple. I feel like on mine there are a lot of bright colour saturation and again although it's similar to the original art style it doesn't necessarily need that to be a good scene and we can see from this one that just slight changes in color work quite well 
we can also see that a lot of projection normals have been used on the rock and stuff and there's been a lot of sculpting going on while I did sculpt all of my buildings and try to use the projection normals because I was also optimizing to use a texture atlas it meant that I couldn't use both my detail normals and my projection normals so I just had to pick which one I thought best and I got some feedback saying that detail normals were probably the best way to go so I went with that and yeah that, that about sums it up I think <laughs>